I'm going to be showing you guys five builds that I think are going to be very good for the new Onslaught mode. And all of these builds are going to be on the Hunter. And of course, if you guys would like to check out all of the builds, they will all be in the link in the description if you guys are interested. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting on the Solar subclass. And for the Super, I am using Golden Gun Marksman. And for the abilities, I chose to put Acrobat's Dodge. Whenever you activate your Dodge ability, it would give yourself and your nearby allies Radiant. And for the Solar Melee, I am using Knife Trick. And for the solar grenade, I put healing grenade. And for the aspects, the first one I put is knock them down, which enhances your golden gun. So it would increase the duration whenever you activate your super. And for the next aspect is on your mark. Whenever you get precision final blows, it would grant you and your nearby allies increased weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration up to times three. So let me show you guys what are the fragments I was using. The first one is Ember of Benevolence. Applying restoration cure or radiant to allies grants increased grenade, melee, and class ability regeneration for a short time, but you would get minus 10 discipline. The second fragment is Ember of Singeing. Your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. And the third fragment is Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you, but you would get minus 10 resilience. The fourth fragment is Ember of Torches. Powered melee attacks against combatants make you and your nearby allies radiant, but you would get minus 10 discipline. And the last fragment I put is Ember of Eruption. Your solar conditions have increased area of effect, but you'll get plus 10 strength. And for the weapons I was using for this build, on the kinetic weapon, I chose to put the strand fusion rifle called Scatter Signal. And the perks I do recommend going for is Overflow and Controlled Burst. You can also be able to stun anti-barrier champions because we are getting unraveling rounds from our seasonal artifacts, and we are also getting Radiant as well. For the exotic weapon, you're going to need to use a Sunshot. And if you do have the catalyst for the Sunshot, it would grab grant you plus 30 range and plus 20 stability. And also with the Sunshot, you're also going to be stunning unstoppable champions because one, we're going to be proccing ignitions and two, we also are using the unstoppable hand cannon mod for the seasonal artifacts. And for the power weapon, I am using a solar rocket launcher, AKA the Apex Predator. And here are the perks that I do recommend going for. The first perk column you got to go for is reconstruction. And for the second perk column, go for bait and switch. And for all of the builds that I'm going to be showing you guys on the power weapon, it's always going to be Apex predator but if you do not have it you can use any other solar weapon you like and for the seasonal artifact mods if you guys would like to check it out it would be right here if you're interested now on to the stats i do recommend going for resilience because it would give you a 30 percent damage reduction if you have tier 10 resilience and also i do recommend for your second stat be sure to go for mobility because it would one reduce the cooldown for your class ability and two it would also increase your movement speed and your maximum jump height so let me show you guys what exotic armor piece i was using for this build i am using the Celestial Nighthawk. Here's what it does. Precision final blows reduce the cooldown of your super, and it would also modify your golden gun into a single fire shot. If you were to defeat a target by that golden gun shot, it would one, give you super energy, and two, they would also explode. And as what you guys are seeing here, these are the armor mods that I was using for this build. The main ones I do want to mention is on the cloak. This mod is called Special Finisher. Finishers generate special ammo for the whole team, but it would consume three stacks of armor charges. And on the chest armor, I am using using charged up so it would increase my armor charges instead of holding three i am now going to hold four so if i do have four charges in total and if i were to finish a target it would consume three and that last armor charge will be for my weapon damage boost to my solar weapons and also for the solar siphon as what you're seeing on the helmet it is actually solar slash strand dual siphon because of the seasonal artifact mods so be sure to keep that one in mind so if you guys would like to have a high damage power super that will also explode targets whenever you get a kill and also unleashing tons of radiant restoration cure and ignitions then this build is for you and now let's head to the second build the void hunter let's start with the subclass for the super i am using shadow shot mobius quiver just because it deals a lot of damage to targets so that's why i put it for the abilities i am using marksman dodge just to reload my weapon and for the void grenade i am using vortex grenade for the aspects be sure to put vanishing step because whenever you dodge it would make you invisible and the next aspect is stylish execution Defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. And for the fragments, here's what I was using. The first one I chose to put is Echo of Cessation. Finish your final blows creates a burst of void damage that causes nearby combatants to become volatile. And also, whenever you defeat volatile targets, it would also create a void breach. So whenever you collect a void breach, it would give you class ability energy. The second fragment is Echo of Persistence. Void buffs applied to you, such as invisibility, overshield, or devour, have increased duration. But 
but you would get minus 10 mobility. The third fragment is Echo of Starvation. Picking up a Void Breach or an Orb of Power grants Devour, but you would get minus 10 recovery. The final fragment is Echo of Obscurity. Finish your final blows grants invisibility, and you're also going to be getting plus 10 recovery. So let's start with the weapons. For the kinetic weapon, I'm using this Stasis Fusion Rifle called the Riptide. And here are the perks that you should be running for this one. The first one is Auto Loading Holster. And the second perk column is Choke Clip. Yes, this did get a nerf. So instead of you taking two shots to freeze a target, so it's now going to be three shots to freeze a target and also stun Unstoppable Champions. And for the exotic weapon, I am using Collective Obligation. So if you do not know what this does, it basically leeches off either suppressed, weakened, or volatile targets. And it will transform that weapon. And once it's charged, and if you were to hold your reload button, it would change the firing mode. And in this mode, if you were to damage this weapon, it would apply the same void debuffs that were leached. And so this is the weapon that would give you the ability to stun anti-barrier champions because we are getting volatile rounds from this. And if you guys would like to copy the seasonal artifact mods, it would be right here on screen if you're interested. Let's talk about the stats. Of course, with PvE, your main priority is to go for resilience. And you can either go both ways from the second stat. You can either go for mobility or discipline. So either mobility or discipline would work. So for the exotic armor piece I put is the Geyer Falcon's Halberg. I probably butchered it, but it is what it is. So here's what it does. Your void weapons gain volatile rounds after you emerge from being invisible. When you are invisible and defeat a combatant while you're using a finisher, all of your weapons gain bonus damage. You and your nearby allies gain a reserve overshield and improved class ability regeneration. These reserve overshields can be deployed by using a class ability. And of course, these are the armor mods that I was using for this build. And for the boots, I am using elemental charge. So if I were to collect a void breach, it would give me an escalating chance to give me an armor charge. So if you guys like to go invisible non-stop and also have unlimited volatile rounds, then this build is for you. So now onto the third hunter build, the arc subclass. For the super, be sure to go for gathering storm. And for the abilities, you got to go for gambler's dodge, because whenever you dodge near an enemy, it would recharge your melee ability. And for the arc melee, be sure to go for combination blow. And for your arc grenade, go for pulse grenade. For the aspects, go for flow state. Defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. While you are amplified, your dodge recharges more quickly. You are also more resilient while dodging and your reload speed is greatly increased. The second aspect is lethal current. After dodging, your next melee attack has increased the lunge range, jolts the target, and it would also create a damaging aftershock. Damaging a jolted target with a melee attack also blinds them. And for the fragments here is what I was using. The first one is spark of shock. Your arc grenades jolt targets, but you will get minus 10 discipline. The second fragment is spark of magnitude. This one increases the duration for your pulse grenade. The third fragment is spark of feedback. Taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing melee damage, and you would also get plus 10 resilience. The next fragment is Spark of Resistance. While surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage, and you would also get plus 10 strength. And here are the weapons that I was using. For the kinetic weapon, I chose to put this Strand Shotgun, and the perks that I do recommend going for is Slice Shot, and also the main one is 1-2 Punch. And for this weapon, you're also going to be getting anti-barrier rounds, because whenever we pick up an Orb of Power, we are going to be getting Unraveling rounds. And for the exotic weapon I chose to put is the Sunshot. And of course, you're going to be stunning Unstoppable Champions because of the Unstoppable Hand Cannon mod and the Seasonal Artifacts. And if you guys would like to copy the Seasonal Artifact mods, it would be right here on screen. So for the stats, I do recommend going for Resilience, of course. And for the second stat, go for Mobility if you'd like to reduce your class ability cooldown even further. Let's talk about the exotic armor piece. You can actually use two, but the first one I chose to put mainly is this Liar's Handshake. Using your Arc Melee ability or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counterpunch that will also heal you. And for the second one you could put is Star Eater Scales if you do want to enhance your super damage. And it's called Feast of Light. You gain additional super energy from orbs of power you pick up. While your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power overcharges your super, causing you to gain a burst of healing when cast and a bonus to your super damage. At maximum overcharge, you also gain an overshield. And of course, here are the armor mods that I was using for this build. Let me show you guys the ones that I do think you should know more. The first one is Grenade Kickstar. It would consume your armor charges and would convert that into grenade energy. So if you guys would like to dodge and melee non-stop and also getting increased melee damage even further, then this build is for you. And now let's head to the fourth build on the Strand Hunter. For the abilities, be sure to go for Gambler's Dodge. And for your Strand Grenades, go for Shackle Grenade. And onto the aspects, be sure to go for Widow's Silk so you can get an additional grenade charge. So now we are going to be having two Shackle Grenades instead of one. And for your next 
aspect, go for Whirling Maelstorm. So whenever you defeat a Tangle, it will summon this Strand Beyblade that will damage targets and also emit unraveling projectiles whenever they are defeated. And for the fragments, I am putting Threat of Warding. Whenever you pick up an Orb of Power, it would give you Woven Mail, but you would get minus 10 resilience. The second fragment is Threat of Generation. Dealing damage regenerates grenade energy, but you would get minus 10 discipline. For the third fragment, I chose to put is Threat of Continuity. Suspend, Unravel, and Sever effects apply to targets have increased duration. And the final fragment is Threat of Transmutation. While you have Woven Mail, Weapon Final Blows creates a Tangle. And for the Kinetic Weapon, I am using this exotic bow called the Wishkeeper. This is another way to suspend targets as well. So whenever you get Precision Hits and Final Blows, it will build up energy towards a Snare Weaver Arrow that can be fired from the hip. So you are going to be having 6 charges if you want to proc Snare Weaver. So on impact, Snare Weaver Arrows creates a pattern that traps and suspends nearby targets. And for the perk for the Wish Ender, I do recommend going for multi-threaded Snare Refit because your Snare Weaver traps can suspend more targets. You can also be able to stun Unstoppable Champions with this bow because we are using Unstoppable Bow in the Seasonal Artifacts. And you can also suspend the Unstoppables because that's their weakness to that. And for the Energy Weapon, I'm using this Arc Sidearm. And for the perks on this Sidearm, I do recommend going for Beacon Rounds. And the second perk I do recommend going for is Volt Shot. And again, here are the Seasonal Artifact mods if you guys are interested. So for the stats, of course, go for Resilience. And for the second stat, be sure to go for Discipline. For the exotic helmet I chose to put is the Foe Tracer. Damaging a powerful Cabanon or Guardian with an ability grants you a temporary bonus to weapon damage matching your subclass type. Defeating the target with a weapon matching the damage type of your subclass creates an elemental pickup. And again, if you guys are interested in the armor mods for this build, it will be right here on screen. So if you guys do like to suspend targets and also getting unraveling rounds as well, then this build is for you. Now onto our last build, and it's on the Stasis Hunter. For the abilities, I am using Gambler's Dodge. And for the Stasis Grenade, I chose to put is Duskfield Grenade, which slows and freezes targets whenever they're inside. For the aspects, be sure to go for Winter Shroud because whenever you dodge, it will slow nearby targets. And the best aspect for this build is Touch of Winter because we are using Duskfield Grenade, so it would increase the slowed field size and it would also create a Stasis Crystal on impact. And for the fragments I chose to put is Whisper of Durance. Slow that you apply to targets lasts longer. For those abilities that linger, the duration will also increase, and you're also going to be getting plus 10 strength. The second fragment is Whisper of Fissures. Increases the damage and size of the burst of stasis when you damage a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. And the third fragment is Whisper of Shards. Shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate, and also shattering additional stasis crystals increases the duration of this benefit. And the last fragment fragment I chose to put is Whisper of Rending. Primary ammo weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. And of course, the best exotic for this stasis build is the Virgulus Curve. So if you were to get final blows with this weapon, it would grant stasis arrows. Your next hip fire shot will fire all of them in a single volley, and you can be able to hold times five stasis arrows. If you do have the catalyst, here's what it does. Freezing or slowing a target grants this weapon faster draw speed for a short period of time. And of course, for the Virgulus Curve, Curve, you're also going to be stunning unstoppable champions because of the bow and two freezing them as well and for the energy weapon i'm putting this arc sidearm just because i want to stun anti-barrier champions and for the final time if you guys would like to see the artifact mods for this build it would be right here on screen and for the stats i do recommend going for resilience and you can either choose for your second stat to go for mobility or discipline but for me i do recommend going for discipline because of the exotic gauntlet called renewal grasps here's what it does your dusk field grenades have a much larger effect radius and allies inside the dusk field take reduced damage and targets inside the area deal reduced damage and again here are the armor mods that i was using for this build if you guys are interested so for this build if you guys do like to slow and freeze targets non-stop and also spawn in tons of stasis crystals then this build is for you if you guys would like to see this on the titan be sure to let me know in the comments and if you guys enjoyed or found this informative be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe i hope you guys have a good rest of your day evening or afternoon take care and peace join the discord